So the basic premise of Fire Girl is that you're the newest member of a low-funded fire station in the wake of increasingly frequent and dangerous fires popping up all around the city. The main character Fire Girl is taking up her father's legacy to fight fires and save lives, while using the money and fame from each rescue to help rebuild the station to its former glory. However, as the story progresses, there's a larger conspiracy to unravel surrounding the frequency of these mysterious fires and the monsters you find inside them. The story is presented seemingly at random throughout gameplay, as sometimes I've gone only a few missions before triggering a cutscene, and other times it's taken dozens of runs before seeing anything new. Now I'm not sure if it's a bug, or if I missed something specific to trigger the progression, but I could not get a new story beat for several hours early in the game across numerous runs, no matter if I won or lost which really hindered my ability to review the story aspect of the game before writing this review. First off, I want to start by saying Fire Girl is a lot more challenging than it looks, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. So the gameplay is split between two main sections. There's fighting fires and managing the fire station. In the main gameplay experience, the firefighting, the players dropped into a randomly generated location with the task of rescuing all the trapped civilians in the area and then escaping before the time runs out. You only have access to a couple of tools, Fire Girl's trusty axe and the hose. The axe is used for breaking down parts of the environment like debris and doorways, while the hose is used to propel yourself upwards and battle the various fire monsters blocking your path at every turn. I found the gameplay here to be a lot of fun, even as someone with a burning hatred for mission timers. The hose feels very satisfying to spray, especially if you're using a controller, and the variety of monsters combined with the randomly positioned objectives and bonuses provides a strong counterbalance of risk versus reward in each run. On the other side of the game is the fire station management, wherein players can use the money earned from completing runs to upgrade Fire Girl's arsenal as well as unlock passive buffs such as improvements to the water tank and longer mission timers, all of which are permanently unlocked for future runs once you buy them. While the gameplay itself is fun and challenging, my biggest complaint is just how unforgiving the game's progression is. I found myself dying over and over again early in the game, because the starting power of your character is just too low compared to the difficulty of each run, and it's nearly impossible to escape on time with the default mission timer length. On top of this, the game only gives the same small amount of money for failure, no matter how well you did on the run, a rate that is cut even further if you die or the timer runs out. What this essentially means for the early game is that players will be too underpowered to complete runs and at the same time can't make enough money to purchase the upgrades necessary to be able to beat them. This drop in progression was my main source of frustration throughout the game's opening hours, and it was only made worse as the price for upgrades became too steep for the benefits they provided. Unless you can get really good at the game and reliably complete perfect runs, it can be a dreadful grind of dying over and over again for a tiny amount of money just to unlock one more health point or 30 more seconds on that mission timer. The base amount of money earned can be upgraded later on, but the minuscule income boost is nowhere near worth the rising cost of its upgrades. I think that if the progression were tweaked just a little bit, it would make the overall experience much better. So I want to start this section by saying that the art style of this game is what originally drew me in in the first place. The characters and items are all rendered as 2D sprites, while the environments are modeled and lit in 3D. While these two styles are very different from each other, the art team has managed to blend the two almost seamlessly through the use of lighting and reflections that make even 2D sprites feel like they belong in the world. Lights and shadows cast by the environment dynamically alter the appearance of the 2D sprites, making them feel like solid objects in a 3D world while still allowing them to pop out from the background and keep their distinct appearance. The animations for these 2D characters are expressive and constantly moving, even for the people just standing around in the background, paying homage to the expressive style of older 2D arcade games with a modern touch. While the game's visual style is more simplistic in nature, the developers have put in an extra level of detail with every aspect of the gameplay. Spraying water leaves little pools on the ground that reflect the area above them, breaking debris makes it fall to pieces with physics-based destruction, and objects in the environment react to you running into them or spraying them with the hose. 
The in-game UI is a lot simpler in design and a little less polished than the rest of the graphics, but the simplicity of the icons leads to easy readability, which is especially important for a game as fast as this, where you don't have time to read complex information. The only issue I had with the game's visuals came in the form of the main and pause menus, which feel a bit bland and dated compared to the rest of the game's visual presentation. Other than that, the game boasts a beautiful and impressive art direction that really stands out from other side-scrollers. <laughs> Taking more inspiration from classic side-scrollers, Fire Girl features several energetic tracks reminiscent of old-school beat-em-ups that match the fast pacing of the gameplay itself. The same thing can also be said about the game's sound effects, from every slash of the axe to the game's enthusiastic announcer that yells out whenever you find an item or rescue one of the game's various civilians and animals in need. The audio also helps in warning the player of the dangers ahead, as each of the different enemies in the game makes a distinct sound when you approach. The soundtrack, while somewhat generic due to the nature of the game, still works well with the visuals and gameplay, which is the most important target for a game's music to hit. While the same music is repeated for certain parts of the game, there are multiple tracks that can play during the game's main runs, so you're not listening to the same thing over and over, which is especially important given how fast and how often you'll be playing them throughout the course of the story. While Fire Girl has taken a lot of the positive aspects of older games, it has sadly inherited one of the biggest drawbacks from that time period as well, a complete lack of accessibility options. I'm unsure if anything will be added to the game later on, but with the increasing emphasis on the importance of accessibility in the modern gaming space, it was surprising to find that none of these important features were present in the game's options. There are no settings to adjust the difficulty, nothing to assist the visually or audibly impaired players, and no way to remap the game's controls besides choosing between two different presets. Accessibility is a highly important aspect of game design, and it can make or break the success of modern indie titles, so I'm hoping that the developers will consider taking a step in that direction sooner rather than later. The only positive thing I can say for this category is that the game is available in a multitude of languages, which allows for a much more diverse player base in that regard. Fire Girl is a challenging and fast roguelite experience that has simple but effective gameplay and a beautiful art style. However, the slow progression really drags down the experience, especially in the early game, which can leave players feeling too frustrated to continue playing. Now this is a big shame, because the gameplay feels so much better with the right upgrades and unlocks that you get farther down the line. The gameplay loop is quick, simple, and a little repetitive, but the random generation of each map and the difficulty from both unforgiving enemies and tight time constraints still make it a very fun experience for those who enjoy a challenge. It's also worth noting that when I do lose a run, and you will lose a lot of runs, it almost never feels like the game cheated me out of a victory. It's usually the result of pushing through too quickly or not paying enough attention to the surroundings. Overall, I feel that the game hits all the marks for what it's trying to accomplish gameplay-wise, but is being held back by a progression system that punishes all failures equally, while at the same time drip-feeding essential upgrades to those who can't consecutively complete perfect runs. Other than that, I really enjoyed the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, and I found myself stopping frequently just to look at the wonderfully unique visuals. This is difficult to review because I really want to recommend it on the graphics and the gameplay alone, especially with the noticeable care that was put in by the developers, but it needs to be said that in its current state, Fire Girl doesn't respect the player's time and effort enough, and a lack of accessibility options really narrows down the possible audience, especially for a cute indie title like this. Now if you can overlook these issues, you still have a beautiful and challenging retro roguelite experience underneath that'll keep you on your toes throughout every run.